Every week, there's a new headline about the rise of China and the threat to the future of our world. Why does China have such a big interest in Africa? Why is China trying to expand so aggressively in the Indo-Pacific region? How did China convince more South American countries to work with them? And is China actually responsible for the breakdown of American democracy that we see today? The United States fears China for one simple reason. China is the only country in the world that contains the economic, military, diplomatic, and technological power to challenge the United States' global hegemony. Western media teaches us to fear China, but let's do a little research and discover the truth about the United States and China's efforts around the world. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Skillshare. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will receive a one-month free trial to Skillshare. We'll start today's analysis from a clip from Colonel Richard Black, a former United States Marine and government official representing the state of Virginia. The illusion of Russian and Chinese aggression around the world, you'll hear this repeated many, many times. China's taking over the world, they're doing all this stuff. We've created this bizarre illusion because the war industrial complex must have enemies. You cannot manufacture weapons when you don't have enemies. And this is the unfortunate thing about the United States economy. It largely depends on the military industrial complex and spending money on wars and international conflicts around the world. And so we create this illusion that they're coming to get us. They're, they're on our doorstep. And the fact of the matter is that China is out to make a buck. They want money. Uh, they, yes, they, they, uh, the, the Belt and Road Initiative is very important, but they have a different paradigm. If you've ever done business with Chinese people, you'll know that they're very savvy, they're very business smart, and again, Chinese people don't let political differences get in the way. Our paradigm is we, we go into a country, we set up uh, NGOs, uh, we take over, you know, the government by coup if we can't, then we just, we just bomb the place to smithereens half the time. Given the United States track record, this is why China and many other countries around the world are actually very fearful and skeptical whenever the United States gets involved in a project. Are you genuinely wanting to help the people in this country? Or are you more interested in actually changing the government and installing a government that better suits United States interests? And you compare that with the with the foreign policy of China, which is you go in, you work with whatever government is there, you don't, you don't, you're not judgmental, but you make hard business decisions, you make investments. And uh, I think for people who are comparing the foreign aid paradigm of, of the US and China, they're saying, my likelihood of surviving is much higher if I follow the Chinese paradigm. To give you a better perspective of this, let's travel to South America, and I'm going to show you a clip from John Perkins. Mr. Perkins is a famous author of the book Confessions of an Economic Hitman, and in this book he exposes how the United States government traveled around the world and convinced smaller, developing nations to take substantial loans that were in the best interest of the United States government. But what China has done <clears throat> differently than the United States, and I, I, I asked I, I ask my friends in high places, and in some of the Latin American countries, why are you taking loans from China? Don't you think that they're they're going to do the same thing? That you, 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 that's coming out. We'd much rather take loans from China than the United States. And I'd say, but wait, aren't they after your resources too? And they say, yeah, they're after our resources. We don't have the technology to mine, to to drill for oil, to do these things. So we need outside company, uh, country to help us. Uh, and we know that the United States has a record of of overthrowing our governments and assassinating leaders. We all know that and of building military bases on our soil and of forcing us to vote against Cuba and the United Nations, doing things, exercising huge controls over us. And China hasn't done that. China's not built any military bases here. They've not taken out any of our presidents. They've not been involved in any coups. And so we'd prefer to take loans from them. One of the stories that many of us are familiar with is China's efforts in developing the continent of Africa. I'm sure many of you have seen these viral thumbnails on YouTube that portray the continent of Africa with a red Chinese flag and want you to believe that China is trying to enslave the entire continent of Africa. been very concerned lately about China. They are now all over Africa you know, buying things and investing over there and getting those countries dependent on them and supporting, you know, non-democratic people. And I'm just Like whom? 
well. We come. We are in a country that supports Saudi Arabia. Yes, that's yeah? true. Right. So, so suddenly how? we have a problem with, uh, you know, superpowers supporting non-democratic people. <laughs> the speaker in this clip is Greek politician Yanis Varoufakis, who brings up a great point. This American lady is concerned that China is doing business with non-democratic nations. Meanwhile, this speech has taken place in America, who has a very close relationship with non-democratic Saudi Arabia. In fact, the United States and Saudi Arabia have had a very close diplomatic relationship since 1945. The United States basically overlooks any human rights violations and state-sponsored terrorism in exchange for two things oil, and Saudi Arabia's support on all United States foreign policy issues. They're in Africa. They're, they're lending money to countries to build ports and different infrastructure. To, to build what? Port And harbors. what's wrong with that? And, well, because... Countries that need ports get ports. But they're making people dependent on... I mean, I know, it's the same thing that we've done, which is no, it's horrible not. around the world. They are, they are far more humanistic than the United States ever was. <laughs> really? Okay. Absolutely. Great. So... Let me give, give you an okay. example. Of course they're trying, they are peddling for, in, for, for influence. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, but they are non-interventionist. Absolutely non-interventionist in a way that Europeans, the West, has never managed to fathom. And Yanis makes another great point. China is doing things very differently than both the United States and European superpowers in the past. Because I know at the end of the day, my deal with the Chinese is to benefit Africa. And the Chinese have always been fair. Like... This big propaganda that the Chinese are trying to use it, to me, I don't see it. I've seen none but fair deals. Unless you do a bad deal, of course. I mean, unless you do a bad deal, of course. But even then, I haven't seen them take advantage. I honestly haven't. And I've been dealing with the Chinese for the last seven years. I haven't seen them try to take advantage. You know, they come fair. Look, we'll do this for that. It's always been fair. Whereas French, they take and never give anything back ever, still this day, they've been in places three, four hundred years, and that place in, in areas in Africa has never developed not one inch. Again, we see a continuous theme here. China comes in and they offer you a deal. We'll do this for that. And this has earned China a certain reputation among African countries and among African people. China's engagement in Africa has always resulted in some productive asset or some productive sector being left, whether it's in the form of infrastructure, or some kind of concrete exchange in the form of investment, uh, whatever, that leaves visible concrete uh, asset on the ground, in the, especially in the productive economic sector rather than in the human development sector. Basically, if you do a deal with China, you're going to receive a tangible asset. It could be a new rail line, a new airport, a new seaport, but you're going to be receiving something that will directly benefit the local economy. But I'm, I was just relaying the perception in Africa that if you want concrete things, you go to China. If you want to engage in endless discussions and, 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 and discourse, you go to the normal traditional donors. So I think the challenge really is on the West to prove that partnership can really yield some concrete outcomes and results. The challenge is actually on the West to do more and to do better. And this is why we're seeing this continuous theme around the world. More countries, everybody from Indo-Pacific nations to countries in South America, Africa, all over the world are choosing to do business with China because they can see the tangible results. And we all know that China is the world's factory. And if you do business with China, you're not only are opening yourselves up to the second largest economy in the world, but you're also opening up to future world trade with many nations around the world. In closing, let's go back to Colonel Richard Black and hear his proposal for what the United States needs to do moving forward. We need to just get away from this feeling that we have to constantly be at war with the entire world. 5,000, 6,000 miles of ocean separating us from the nearest threats that we perceive. We probably have less reason to be militaristic than any great nation on earth. The ironic thing is that the United States government spends trillions of dollars on its military and conflicts around the world. Meanwhile, the United States is the only country in the world that cannot keep its children safe at school. This is an absolute pandemic and violence in America is at really unprecedented levels. Honestly, America really needs to check itself and we must ensure one of the most basic human rights in a civil society and that is safety for citizens. If we could ever break 
away from the illusion that they're out to get us, which is totally false. We could start chopping back on our, on our defense budget. World tensions could re reduce and have a, a genuine economy that wasn't based on killing people in foreign countries. In my opinion, the United States needs to do more for its citizens on the ground in America. We need a government that actually is accountable for the people. And this is something that the United States needs to look internally. As we look outside of America, let's do more business deals and focus on trade. I'm a huge proponent that the United States and China must come and work together. And I'm one for just separating our differences in politics. The United States and China are never going to see eye to eye on the political spectrum. However, we can learn to work together because this is what is needed for the future of our world. Everyone, today's video was proudly sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anybody who loves to learn and wants to explore their creativity. Now, over the past few months, I've been using Skillshare to improve a variety of skills in my personal life. I first started by taking numerous classes on how to improve myself as a YouTuber, everything from writing better scripts to creating better thumbnails. I then learned about how to improve my skills in the stock market and investing. And most recently, I discovered this class, Modern Meditation, Discover Your Potential, Power, and Purpose. You see, whatever skill you want to learn in this life, most likely Skillshare is going to have a suitable course for you. The first thousand people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. Everyone, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to spend it with me here on YouTube. If you've made it to this point in the video, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and drop me a comment down below. Make sure you take advantage of this opportunity from Skillshare. Everyone, my name is Cyrus Jansen. I look forward to seeing you all in next week's video.